She confessed to everything and told me to give her another chance and to forgive her. I simply told her that I would forgive but didn't want to continue the relationship. I got up and left her crying to the point she couldn't breathe. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with, with another subscriber email story. If you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. You guys read the title? Let's just get into it. So, a bullet dodged. Found out ex-fiance cheated before marriage. Hey, True Story, I've been following you for a while now. While I was in a relationship, engaged in fact, thinking, man, that couldn't really happen to me, could it? Guess what? It sure did. I'm 33, never been married and have no kids. I'm also half Brazilian, but born in the USA. Entire family is from Brazil. I speak and read and write Portuguese fluently. Some of it thanks to my parents and some because I'm determined to learn. I've always had a thing for Brazilian women and my dream is to have a wife that's from Brazil. I find that I love the culture and how they treat their men very amazing and different from the states. I met this girl from Brasilia. Let's call her Kay. I'm always traveling back and forth from Brazil so, so a long distance relationship really isn't bad for me but I already know what you're gonna say. It never works out. I watch you enough to know this but as always I thought this one was different. I met her while I was vacationing in the capital and she was in her early 20s. Super beautiful and body like you wouldn't believe. Long black hair and even shorter than me. Which is what I always wanted. I'm 5'6", so it's hard to come by. So we hit it off so well and I'm not a pushy guy so I let her kind of come to me while giving her just a piece of me every time. Before I knew it, a week before my departure, she wanted to know how we were going to continue what we had because she didn't want to lose me. So we decided to make it official and continue the long distance relationship. During the time I was home, she was very transparent. She was sent from heaven and that I wanted to be with her for the rest of my life. So after a few months, I traveled back with one thing in mind, engagement, to start our new life together in the USA. I never saw someone so happy and she cried and hugged me. It felt so good to see her like that. I myself couldn't express the happiness I had at the time. We enjoyed each other while I was there, and it was time to go back home to start the K-1 fiancé visa process. The process was six months in and still didn't hear a word from USCIS, aka Homeland Security for visas. So I planned a surprise visit to Brazil to go see my fiancé. Boy was I wrong. So I arrived at where she lived with her grandma, supposedly. I spoke to her grandma and she was super surprised to see me and said, We didn't know you were coming. She seemed happy to see me, but then I popped a question and was asking where Kay was. I wanted to surprise her. She told me that she was basically living at her so-called friend's house. We will call her D. I was asking, what do you mean? Her grandma stated that ever since I left, she basically started living with another girl. D. I said, okay, I didn't think much of it since the other person was female. But the question in the back of my head was, why didn't she tell me this before? Anyways, the grandma was kind enough to give me the address, so there I went to see my future wife. I show up at the door and some random woman with black hair looked like she was in her early 40s or late 30s. Opens the door and she was very confused why I was there and was asking me, can I help you? I politely said, yes, I'm sorry to bother you, but are you D? She said, yes, how do you know that? I said, oh, I came by to see my fiance Kay. I heard she was your roommate. That's when I looked at her face and I knew something was horribly wrong. She responded, how do you know my fiance? When she said that, my heart dropped. I couldn't believe my fiance was cheating on me with another woman much older than me. And on top of that, engaged to both of us at the same time without either of us knowing each other we were both very shocked i showed her pics and videos of us together she sure as heck showed me hers i didn't know what to say so tired and upset i went back to my uncle's house and my phone started to blow up i simply turned it off because i knew it was her 
I had over 50 missed calls and in the same amount of messages of her apologizing and not being honest about the AP. Since I didn't want her to come to where my family was, I agreed to meet her at a decent location so we could talk. She confessed to everything and told me to give her another chance and to forgive her. I simply told her that I would forgive but didn't want to continue the relationship. I got up and left her crying to the point she couldn't breathe. I packed my bags, went home, and canceled my K-1 visa process along with every everything else. Lesson learned. Take your time in today's day and age. You really don't know who the person is. And yes, true story, no more long distance relationships for me. Thank you for what you do for all of us guys. I am super happy single and focusing on my career already got a huge pay increase and upgrade where I work so I don't lose anything. I'm good. Keep up the good work. Wow, let me give my thoughts. Salute to you, man. Salute to you. You learned your lesson. Yeah. <laughs> I used to talk about long distance relationships all the time and I still believe in it doesn't work. It doesn't work, man. It does not work. Uh, some, Of course, some people are probably going to come in and say, yeah, I was in a long distance relationship and I've been married for 30 years. I'm not saying it's not possible, but likely she's going to be cheating. You know, there's going to be some cheating in that relationship and some lying. So uh, you learned your lesson. Um, man, she had, <laughs> she was engaged to you and somebody else. Looks like she was just trying to, I don't know, she was trying to take advantage and use you unfortunately man unfortunately thanks for sending in this email guys if you want to send in an email send it to true story nation at gmail.com here i'll put it on screen that's true story nation at gmail.com with that being said if you guys are new here to the channel i'm going to go ahead and, and add a flashback story with that being said i'll catch you guys at the next one subject my wife of 21 years wants back in with me after we divorced comes crawling back he starts off with what's up true long time subscriber here found your channel while looking up men's health and help channels on youtube about a year ago and found it fascinating a channel like yours even existed there are others though but they all have that automated voiceover which grates at your nerves after a few videos so coming across your channel was a welcomed surprise. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. The story begins in 1990. This was the year I met my now ex-wife, Penny. We were both 18 at the time. I met her on a hot summer day on Coney Island. I'm from New York City. She's from New Jersey. She was with her sister and a couple of friends. I was with my boys. We ran into each other on the boardwalk when my best friend was trying to holler at her sister. Sparks flew immediately between us, and within three days, we'd gone on our first date. We dated two years before I popped the question to her, and she happily said yes. 21 years of marriage and three children. 27, female, 25, female, and a 21-year-old male. Three months ago, my youngest turned 21. It was a special day. My baby boy was officially a grown man. I took him out for dinner and drinks to celebrate. The weather was still somewhat nice and New York City had outdoor dining in place for the virus. While we were enjoying our time, my ex texted me out the blue. Now mind you, it had been the first time she's ever reached out to me since 2014. We divorced in 2013 after she cheated on me with a mutual friend. I've decided to leave out the details as to her affair. I know a lot of folk get off on that aspect, but I'd rather not. Maybe someday I'll go into details, but not today. I was asking her how she got my number, and she said she had gotten it by actually getting a paid LinkedIn account and viewing my contact info. Since I'd long since changed my old number and completely blocked her from all forms of communication. For context, our son hasn't spoken to his mother since our divorce or more so since it was revealed she cheated on me. Because he's the one who discovered it, whoa. He walked in on my ex-wife and her lover when he came home early from school that day. She apparently forgot it was a half day that day and figured she'd have the house to herself until I returned from work. From that moment on, my son absolutely loathed his mother. 
When the subject of custody came up in divorce, my son immediately said he wanted to live with me. She had tried and tried to reach out to him and make peace with him, but he absolutely shunned her. He doesn't even refer to her as his mother. He uses the term maternal donator. She stopped trying in 2017, and we'd never heard from her since, until then. Okay, back to her text. She was asking me if I was with her son. We'll call him Simba, to which I said yes. Obviously, she knew it was his 21st birthday and was trying to find a way back into his life because this would likely be her last chance. So she's asking me if it were possible to meet up so we could talk. Just her and I. Everything in my being wanted to say no, but I agreed. A week later, we met at a diner we'd go to often when we were younger. She shows up looking admittedly phenomenal. The moment I laid eyes on her, I knew what was about to happen. She sits down, we order food and make small talk before I boldly ask flat out, why are you here, Penny? Her smile swipes away as she almost gasps at how blunt I was. She goes right into telling me all that had happened to her since we split. She actually started dating her AP, but it fizzled out after a year and a half. She says she tried to reach out to me, but I changed all my contact info and completely cut her out of my life. For the next few years, she dated around. But the more she tried to put me in the past and move on, the more she realized she messed up. <laughs> she said it was earlier this year, right when the lockdown started here in New York City and she was alone with her puppy, that it finally fully hit her. How she ruined her life over a fling. How she destroyed the relationship with her only son because she felt like she could do better than me with her AP when she had the best possible life and a loving family. I just sat there and ate my food as my ex basically poured her soul out onto the table. She finished up by telling me, and I quote, I just want you to know, if you could ever find it in your heart to forgive me, that's when I spoke up and said, I can't forgive you for what you did to me. I can't forgive you for what you did to our son. I can't give you the peace you're asking. I can't give you the peace you're seeking. Your soul is hurting right now, and you are now feeling the full brunt of your actions. And it hurts like nothing you've ever experienced in life. That's how I hurt for years after we split. Searching my soul, trying to piece myself back together. I gave you 21 years. I put a roof over your head, food in your belly, and gave you stability. And you decided that some dude, bro, with money and a fancy car was a trade-up? So you not only effed him in my own home, but you ultimately left me for him. And when he was bored with you, he discarded you like yesterday's newspaper. Now, here you are seven years later, a week after our son turned 21, asking for forgiveness. Because as it turns out, you're the one no one wants in their lives. Dressing her down like that caused her to start sobbing. I half expected her to stand up, throw her drink at me and storm off. That would have actually made things easier, but she didn't. She sat there and took it. I took a deep breath and I was asking, what do you want from me, Penny? You broke our vows. You broke my trust. You broke hearts. How am I supposed to forgive you for that? After drying her face off, she said she didn't want me to take her back. Not like that. She said she didn't want a reconciliation because our old marriage was dead and buried. She wanted to rebuild my trust from the ground up for us to be friends again. She's asking me to allow her to at least try to redeem herself. I so wanted to say F this and F you and be done with it. But that damn voice in the back of my head started getting in the way. She's the mother of your kids and it's been seven years. You hate this woman with a passion, but you still love her. So I told her I'd make no guarantees. Our relationship will never be the same. For me to even step on the road of trusting her, she needed to fess up to everything she did, including all that was left out in the divorce. If she gave me at least that, I'd consider it. And amazingly enough, she did. Three days later, I went to her apartment and she told me everything. Having those wounds open back up was not fun. Let me tell you, there was so much I didn't know about her affair that it outweighed what I did know. She was 100% transparent and actually allowed me to record the entire discussion. Not sure what it matters, but I did anyway. She also did something she never did the entirety of her affair or the divorce. She apologized and I know it was a genuine apology because she's literally got nothing else to lose. She explained that over the course of the last seven years, she's ultimately become a pariah after her AP dumped her, 
the circle of friends who did remain close to her began dropping off one by one. By 2016, she was pretty much solo. She told me about her unsuccessful attempts at getting back into the dating game. How one guy basically ghosted her after she gave him the skins. And how the most recent guy she was involved with turned out to be a sleazeball. Kind of took a mild joy in that information. But I kept that to myself. She also told me that she was going to therapists every week since 2017. And did a lot of soul searching to try and find why she was unhappy. She even provided me the info of her therapist so that I could verify she was actually a client. I did, and she is. So that was roughly three months ago. We've been in contact every day since. There's been nothing romantic spoken of, though I get the sense that she wants to. Our convo is strictly platonic stuff and talking about what went wrong, why it went wrong, and how we could have and should have dealt with it. Plenty of tears shed by both of us. We're in a weird place now. Half of me wants to believe she still has love for me. The other half says she's only making this attempt because, because she's well past the wall and no sane guy wants to be with a near 49 year old divorced woman whose childbearing days are well behind her. I'll admit, hearing her voice again is nice. And yes, I have gone over to her apartment five times in the last three months. She hasn't come back to our old apartment as our son still lives with me due to his college shutting down campus because of the Rona. I really have no idea what's going to happen. Let me be clear, I do not trust this woman, not after what she did to me and my boy, but she has been 100% transparent over the reconnection we've done, more honest now than she'd ever been the entire 21 years we'd been together. There's been times I've caught her staring at me, but when I motion to match her gaze, she'll look away with an ashamed look on her face. One time I was asking her why she does it, and her answer brought about a conflicted feeling. She said, you used to be so warm and friendly, now you're cold and methodical, and I know I'm the one who made you that way. I killed that joyous part in you, and it makes me feel horrible. I can honestly say after three months of interacting with her that she's deeply regretful for what she did to us. That is painfully obvious. What's also painfully obvious is she wants back into my life. She said as much in whatever capacity I'll allow in her own words. She's not the woman I married, nor is she the woman I divorced. This is a completely new person, a person I'm growing to like, but still keeping a distance. I'm giving her enough space to prove, to prove she can consistently stay on the path she's on now. I have not told anyone that we're in contact with each other because for now, this is between her and I. My son is going to be spending Christmas with his girlfriend's family, so I'll be solo this week. I plan on spending time with Penny in New Jersey, and she's going to be completely alone as well, as she has been the last several years. My daughters have sent her gifts for the holidays and birthdays, and they do stay in contact with her, but both no longer live in the area. Eldest lives in Toronto with her husband and is expecting. Younger daughter lives in Seattle and works for a video game developer. Again, I'm conflicted. Part of me thinks this is a horrible idea, and part of me thinks this is a big step towards trusting her again. Let me be clear, I don't owe this woman a damn thing. I'm not doing this for her, I'm doing it for me. If by some chance down the road, I do decide I want to allow her within my world again, it'll be just that, me allowing her back in. So that's where I am with this now. I would definitely keep everyone updated on how things go over Christmas and how things progress over time. Anyway, I'll end the email here. Have a Merry Christmas and be safe and well, my man. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. Wow. So after all these years, she comes crawling back. So here's my thing. It, it kind of does sound like you're leaning towards forgiving her because you said, you know, she seems genuine, like she's really sorry. And she probably is. She realized that it wasn't worth it trying to monkey branch to somebody else. You said the guy had a nice car. He had money, yada, yada, yada. It didn't work out for her. After the divorce, she, she didn't apologize during the whole divorce, even a little after. And she moved on with her life with that guy. And it didn't work out. She tried dating somebody else. It didn't work. Dating other guys. It didn't work. Now, all of a sudden, she misses you. Think about it. If it would have worked out with the AP or with any other guy she met on Tinder or whatever, she wouldn't even be thinking about you. So it's kind of obvious that she's just lonely. 
holidays are around. It's her son's birthday. He won't talk to her because he walked in on his mother cheating on his father. So he, he despises her. She's lonely. Clearly, that's what it is. You said maybe uh, you'll send in updates like a, about what exactly happened or whatever. I mean, all we, we know she cheated. She tried to monkey branch. It didn't happen. Um, but yeah, I would like some updates to see where where it's gone, you know, past Christmas. You know, I'm actually hoping you don't let her come back in. But it's like you said, it's for you. If you want to do it, it's up to you. But you hopefully you won't let something like that happen to you again but i'm sorry man when i think about it listen if she if the things would have worked out with the other guys she wouldn't be thinking about you she wouldn't be thinking about you so i don't know man just let us know what happens salute to you man hopefully uh everything works out for you um for your son guys let me know what you think about this in the comments just, guys if you want to send in the story send it to true story nation at gmail.com here i put it on the screen that's true story nation at gmail.com. And I will catch you guys at the next one.